today's video I am going to be talking about Scythe and Thunderhead by Neil Shusterman and this is going to be a spoiler free review of both of these books but I will also be doing a spoilery chat about these books which will go up as a separate video so if you have read them and you want to hear my thoughts including spoilers then do feel free to check that video out I will link it down below once it's up but for now if you haven't read these books this video is safe because it is going to be spoiler free which means that I am mostly going to be talking about Scythe but I will touch on Thunderhead a little bit towards the end as well so starting with Scythe this Book, like I said, written by Neil Shusterman, is set in a future of the human race and you could call it a utopian or you could call it a dystopian novel depending on your perspective and there are definitely dysfunctional elements to this series um, but I'm going to go with utopian because in this future world the human race have developed to the extent that they there no longer is a concept of natural death. Now people can still die, it's just that they don't stay dead because there are many many ways of people being revived which is what says what it's called in this series. So if you for example jumped off of a roof and fell to your seemingly death then you would be whisked off to a revival centre and within a few days, maybe a week, maybe a couple of weeks, depending on the extent of damage to your body, you would be revived. Also, there's no such thing as dying of old age in this series anymore either because people are able to reset their age. So once people attain the age of 21, they are able to reset their age to whatever age over the age of 21 they like. So you could get to the age of 80 and then reset down to 21 if you so wished. So there's no death by ageing and there's no death by any other means. And so the population could get pretty out of control. Enter the scythes. The scythedom is this sect of society that has been set up to deal with some of those population control issues. They are a group of humans who are trained to kill people. And when a scythe kills you, it's called gleaning. And if you are gleaned by a scythe, then that is the only way in this utopian future where you can permanently die. So if you're gleaned by a scythe, that's it. No revival for you, you're dead. So naturally, people are very scared of scythes but also they are highly revered in this world they don't have to pay for anything they can do whatever they want they're above all laws and because of that naturally there is some corruption in the ranks this story follows two apprentice scythes rowan and citra who have been taken on like i said as apprentices to learn how to kill people <laughs> and be a scythe and it follows their story and like I mentioned before there's corruption in the scythedom and there's a lot of political manoeuvring, there's a lot of intrigue, there's a lot, a lot of twists and turns in this book. This book, book one, Scythe, is so fast paced like beginning to end it is go the whole way through so if you like fast paced books then this is definitely one for you and um, the language used in the book isn't particularly complicated so it is a fast read which is good because it's so fast paced you're just constantly flipping the pages you need to know what's going to happen next so it's good that it's written in a simplistic way because it allows you to speed through the book much much more quickly um, which is necessary because it is intense the whole way through. It's twists, it's turns, it's shock moments, it's sad moments, it's happy moments. There is a, quite a bit of humour in this book, which I don't think I was expecting really at all. But there are some humorous moments in here, which I really enjoyed and I actually do think are necessary because otherwise the themes in this book could potentially be just a little too dark. Um, by comparison, however, Thunderhead is a lot slower. 
it, the writing is possibly a little bit more complex as well, um, but not not by a lot. It's still fairly easy reading, I would say, um, but it is a lot slower. Now, these are the only two books in this series that are out so far, and I, I've scoured the internet trying to find out whether this is a trilogy or a series and I haven't been able to get an answer to that question definitively but my prediction and my feeling is that this will be a trilogy and that it's possible that Neil Shusterman will add some novellas maybe um, for backstory for some of the characters that's a possibility but I think in terms of the actual series itself like the main books in the series I'm pretty sure it's going to be a trilogy and the reason I say that is because this book book two deals with a lot of setup there's still a lot going on um, it is a little bit slower than Scythe but it, it really feels like a middle book in a trilogy if you know what I mean like the end of the book there is a cliffhanger it's not it's not a huge, huge one, but there is a lot that's open and still to be resolved at the end of this book. And I feel like that's why it might be a trilogy, because really, I think in trilogies, that's the only time you get this sort of openness at the end of a second book. Um, but there, there are so many threads in this that need to be pulled together. And I feel like they could be in one book. Um, in which case, if I am right, book three is going to be explosive, potentially even more explosive than Scythe, because there's a lot, a lot of themes and elements and things that need to be pulled together to resolve all of the issues that are left at the end of this book in particular. But I really, really enjoyed these books. I was expecting to enjoy them. The um, the premise of them is super interesting to me. I really, really like dystopian novels, or utopian in this case, but I tend to have difficulties with the endings of them, which is why I tend to steer clear. But the premise of this one was just so intriguing that I couldn't. And I'm really, really glad that I picked these up because they're so good. The twists and the turns are incredible. The writing is really good, but really easy to get through. Not dense at all. There's a lot of really intriguing characters. There's an antagonist that you love to hate because he is an absolute enter chosen expletive here. Like it's, it's a really good book. It's really well written. The plot is super intriguing and it you find, or I find anyway, that a lot of the time I'll read a book and the plot will sound super interesting, but the books don't necessarily deliver on that that plot and on that theme. And the books are a lot more about characters and character development, which I don't have a problem with at all because I love characters and character development. And I'm probably more a character driven reader than a plot driven reader, but it can be a bit disappointing if you pick up a book because the plot sounds really, really interesting to you and then the plot just doesn't deliver and the book is all all about characters. I, I'm kind of greedy. I want both. I want great characters and a great plot. And this series has it. It's, it's really, really great. And I would highly recommend picking it up. To be honest, if you pick up Scythe, I don't think you'll be able to help from picking up Thunderhead. And... I understand the caution. There's been so many people talking about this series and it's really, really hyped. And I myself was really concerned going into it that the hype was going to let it down because that happens all the time for me. I hear nothing but great things about a book and then I'm thinking, oh, the premise sounds really interesting to me. I really want to pick it up and read it. But if it's liked by so many people, am I going to like it too? There's a lot of expectation. So I get that. I get that, you know, you could be nervous about picking it up, but I'd say give it a go. It's not a really long book. It's 440 pages, I think. So it's not a huge undertaking to read. It is well written. It is fast paced and it's written in a way that's, like I said, fairly easy to get through. So, you know, if it ends up not being for you, then fine, fair enough. But I think it's still worth giving it a go. And I personally really, really loved it. Five stars. 
no doubt in my mind whatsoever. I often really struggle with star ratings, but I really don't have any complaints at all about this book, apart from the fact that the third one isn't out yet. That's it. So those are my thoughts and my non-spoiler review of Scythe. Like I said, I will be doing a spoilery review, which won't really be a review, it will just be me ranting and raving about all of these plot twists. So if you've read the book and want to check that out, then like I said before, by all means do. But thank you so much for watching this one. If you want to see more like this from me, then do think about hitting that subscribe button. I'd be so, so grateful. And I hope to see you next time. Thanks. Bye.